Hello everyone, welcome to Storytelling with Jaya from the Goblin Road Venture Community Centre. Storytelling, this is our third session. Have I got something good for you today? It's going to be fun. All right, let's begin as we always do with our hello song. Ready? One, two, three. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. It's time to say hello. Hello. The story I'm going to tell you today is called Alan's Big Scary Teeth. Alan came from a long line of very scary alligators. Scaring was what he was renowned for. Every morning, Alan would shine his scaly scales. He would sharpen his nails and clean every single one of his super sharp teeth for at least 10 minutes at a time. He would then practice his very scary faces in the mirror. He'd make sounds like this. <sighs> Snap! He would also say things like this. I'm Alan, the big, scary alligator. Fear my razor sharp teeth. He would enter into the jungle for his first round of morning scaring. He would say, Snap! Ah! I am Alan. Fear my razor sharp teeth. He'd make the monkeys jump out of the trees and the parrots screech in terror. He would make all the animals super scared and he would feel so satisfied. He'd make his way back to the swamp. He'd relax and do a few crosswords from the alligator times. And then he would take his teeth out of his mouth. No one knew that Alan's teeth were false. He would say, Good night, my lovely snappers, sweet dreams, my lovely teeth. He would then hide them in a super secret hiding place. In the morning, Barry the beaver was up looking for some wood. Whilst he was looking, he came across Alligator, Alan the Alligator, dozing. Afraid that he would wake him, he dived into a bush. He was afraid that Alan might gobble him up whole, but then some sharp teeth fell out of the bush. And they made a sound like this, snap, a very familiar sound. Mm. And then the alligator woke up from a lovely sleep. He looked into his super secret hiding place to get his teeth and they were gone. His teeth were gone. My teeth, my teeth, my teeth are gone. What will I do without my scary teeth? Maybe I can still scare without 
mighty. I'll make my way into the jungle and give it a go. So he made the monkeys tumble out the trees, the frogs leap from their lily pads, and the parrots screech with laughter. Alan just wasn't very scary without his teeth. Alan went back home to the swamp with his head hung down low. He had never been this embarrassed before. Scaring was all he knew. He started to cry a little at first. And then the tears kept flooding down. He could not stop himself. He continued to cry. He howled and yowled louder than all the babies of the jungle put together. He had never felt so embarrassed in his entire life. The next morning, all the animals of the jungle went to Alan's swamp. Frog said, we'll give you back your teeth on one condition. Really? Really? said Alan. Yes. The next morning, Alan woke up. He made all of his scales very shiny. He sharpened his nails and he cleaned his super sharp teeth one by one for at least 10 minutes at a time. He went into the jungle and he became Alan the hairdresser, Alan the gardener, and Alan the dentist. Then every night he became Alan the big scary storyteller. He frightened the frogs. He made them jump out of their lily pads. He made the parrots screech. He made the monkeys tumble out the trees. They were terrified. He would say things like this. I'm Alan, the big scary storyteller. <laughs> Sometimes he would let Barry the beaver try on his big, scary, sharp teeth. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that story. That's my interpretation of Jarvis's Alan's big, scary teeth. Have a favourite story that you always read your child? Do you think you could memorise it? And even if it isn't perfect by memory, don't worry. You can just play around with it night after night. And you can exchange these stories with your children by memory and help them to create the pictures in their imagination. And then you might find, like my son Phoenix, or maybe not, who knows, it's still a great experience even if this doesn't happen. Phoenix has started creating his own imaginative stories based on experiences that he has from day to day. And I think that's amazing. Because by sharing book stories in a book and also stories from my life with my son, he is now really uh, developing his imaginative skills, his storytelling skills at the age of four you know, developing and enhancing his vocabulary. It's really lovely to see. So I encourage you to try to memorise some stories from books or even stories from your own life. The stories from your life tend to be a bit easier because 
we all have stories from our child childhoods that we can't get out of our heads you know you can make them funny you can add to them make them a bit more dramatic and um yeah let me know how you get on we've really enjoyed the experience and i hope you have too and i hope that i can really pass something uh, of a gift on to you through this uh, experience of mine with storytelling all right guys um now i don't even remember if i sang the goodbye song already i don't think i did but here we go <laughs> goodbye everyone Good.